how do we truly create a classroom culture where assessment is what it's supposed to be, which is power and not a form of punishment? Uh, if you're like Kyle and I, in the, over the last few years, you've been changing your teaching practice. You've been implementing different strategies into your classrooms. Uh, you've been working on models. Uh, you've been maybe dabbling into problem-based lessons and trying out uh, the thinking classroom. And what you're noticing with these routines and lessons from your classroom is that when it, you go to pivot towards assessment or evaluation, things are tough. Their things aren't lining up, and it, and you're you're grappling with these ideas of like, how do I how do I take these these assessment tools that I've been told to use by my district or by by uh, my my math department or my school or maybe they're just assessment practices that I've been used to. How do I take those and I mold them into this new teaching method that I've been dabbling with these last uh, these last these last months or these last years? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. How can you get to the true purpose of assessment? Hey there, Math Momakers. John here from Make Math Moments. And in this video, we're going to uh, unlock uh, and, and take a peek at the true purpose of assessment. I know that we've been changing the way we've been teaching, and uh, we've been on a journey, an assessment journey, of how to blend the teaching practices that we're using in our classrooms with uh, you know, good assessment practices, assessment for growth or assessment for learning. So in this video, we're going to talk about the true purpose of assessment, like what I used to do, what we think about in terms of assessment now. We're going to talk about formative assessment and summative assessment, and when is the best time for those. So stick around. This is a quickie video, but we're going to talk about how you can dive in and then actually how you can take that one step further. Stick around to the end so you can see how. Welcome to module one and lesson two, the true purpose of assessment. What is the difference between formative and summative assessment? How is assessment for learning related to formative and summative assessment? And how can this information help me improve student learning? These are the questions we're going to address in this lesson. I learned about these two terms in my first year of teaching. In talking with my department head and other teachers in the lunchroom, I made out what I thought the terms meant. In those early years, I came to learn that formative assessment was giving students a quiz and summative assessment was giving students a unit test. That's what I was thinking back then. You know what? I couldn't be blamed here because I wasn't alone. In his book, Embedded Formative Assessment, Dylan William outlines the origin of the term for formative assessment, which comes from formative evaluation. He cites from Benheim Bloom, by formative evaluation, we mean evaluation by brief evaluations used by teachers and students as aids in the learning process. While such tests may be graded and used as part judging and part classificatory function, we see much more effective use of formative evaluation if it is separated from the grading process and used primarily as an aid to teaching. There are two main parts of this definition I want to point out. First is brief evaluations, which may be graded or not. And the second important term is aids in the learning process. And it goes on to say that the most important part is to use the information to aid instructions. For me, in my first year of teaching, I had picked up on the brief evaluations part. You know, I was calling these quizzes, but I had lost the part about aiding my instruction. I would mark the quiz and record those results and move on. I would blame the student's lack of self-discipline or homework effort if the results were low, and I'd praise my good teaching if the results were great. I never thought of readdressing or using the information to further my instruction with the students. In my opinion, it was too late, but I had just used this quiz instead as a summative assessment. But again, I think I wasn't alone here. Going back to William's book, for many years after educators were convinced formative assessment was a collection of quizzes or tests or physical instruments that gave us information about a student's learning. William writes, it appears educators more often use the term formative assessment to refer to a particular kind of instrument than a process to improve instructions. 
Many teachers focused on those instruments rather than what the instruments told them about the learning that was happening in front of them. Many teachers for years gave quizzes at regular intervals to monitor the achievement of students so they knew which students were meeting the standards and which were not. They, they were called benchmark assessments. Knowing which students are falling behind and which were succeeding is very important data, but using the information in that way doesn't do much for improving instruction or student ongoing learning. This realization occurred to Rick Stiggins in the early 2000s and coined the phrase assessment for learning. If formative assessment is about more frequent, assessment for learning is about continuous. If a formative assessment is about providing teachers with evidence, assessment for learning is about informing the students themselves. If formative assessment tells users who is and who is not meeting standards, assessment for learning tells them what progress each student is making towards meeting each standard while the learning is happening. Switching out the terms formative assessment for assessment for learning is really just semantics. What we need to remember is that both terms should be about the process of learning about our students so we can do something about it. And more specifically, when it's not too late. For us, formative assessment is about both the instruments and the process. Formative assessment is any strategy, tool, or process that allows us to learn about our students' thinking and informs us on how to improve learning for a student. The other critical part must be while the learning is happening. My quizzes were not examples of formative assessment, mostly because I didn't use that information to help improve student learning. Here in Ontario, the EQAO Mathematics Assessment is a standardized test given to students in grades 3, 6, and 9. EQAO, the Education Quality and Accountability Office, doesn't assign the scores to students as marks in their courses. Instead, the office encourages educators, administrators, and parents to use the data to improve their instruction. Often, PLC groups and schools center around using the data to make those improvements. One might argue this is an example of formative assessment, since the grades didn't affect students and the data is for learning. But we'll argue that it is not a good example of the formative assessment we'll be talking about in this course. Mostly because the data learned might help the teacher in the next year. The data learned doesn't do much good for the student upon the data was collected. Good formative assessment helps the learner. We believe all forms of assessment should aid student learning, otherwise we're just giving evaluations. In our courses, the only time we're giving evaluations is the final mark in the course. Otherwise, we're using information we've gained to help our students improve their learning. The true purpose of assessment needs to be about learning. It needs to be about helping our students learn math at a greater depth. Assessment needs to be about valuing growth and not attaching grades to students so they can be sorted. The rest of this mini course is about how we can achieve the true purpose of assessment in our day-to-day -day activities. Hey there at Math Momakers. I hope that uh, we have, have have taken a peek at the true purpose of assessment and have done a, a convincing job uh, for you to think about how to switch and how to start making a transition for some of the practices you've been used to for assessment purposes and and really look at how we can change those so that we are focusing on formative assessment always and assessment for growth. That's one of the biggest changes I know that I have made over the last few years of how I can use that for power in my students' power and how they can empower themselves instead of a form of punishment, which is what I think most of our students see uh, quizzes and tests and assignments and, and you know assessment uh, as. Your next step here is to keep going with the learning. We this this was actually what you just watched was a, a lesson uh, from our full course on assessment for growth uh, inside the Make Math Moments Academy, and Module One is completely wide open uh, for you to engulf. And that was Lesson Two from less uh, from Module One. So. If you are looking for a little bit more of how you can kind of clear the path for assessment, which is what module one here is all about, uh, you watched and, and went through the short lesson on the, the true purpose of assessment. You could backtrack to look at lesson one, which is all about why assessment practices need to change. 
lesson three is about our growth mindset and, and what we need to do to set that up with uh, our colleagues and our students so that we can clear that path for assessment for growth. And then lesson four is how do I create an environment of psychological safety for my students? We need that to set the uh, and clear that path so that we can actually you know, use assessment for power and not punishment in our courses. We've also tossed in one of our old, uh, not old, but uh, uh, one of our webinars on 10 effective uh, assessment strategies. Um, then module two and three, module two is about formative assessment techniques for your classroom. Standards-based grading is module three and how to implement that in your classroom. Um, we go also go into um, oh, what are the th things you need to do to set up your classroom so that you can get into standards-based grading? And also module four is building time for assessment. Um, how, do, how does that look in that classroom? What are the routines we do in our classroom? How do I use portfolios uh, to do this in my classroom? And then module five is all about helping the key stakeholders in our classes, uh, in the people who are working with our students and our parents, uh, how we can help them uh, think about assessment for growth. So check that out. Uh, if you are looking for a deeper dive in assessment, I know that we have been on a, a, a great journey here and, and we've poured everything that we've learned into this course. So uh, keep learning and uh, we will see you um, in the next video. But if you are interested in that, check the link out below so that you can access the rest of module one for free. Take care.